here is the story. You started developing VR games using Unity and Quest 2. And you're using this tethering method to see your result basically and debug the entire program. Now, if you are like me who likes to check after every single correction or change you make, then you might find this USB tethering to be like little inconvenient. But thankfully, we have an alternate method of doing this wire free. USB tethering is not the only way through which you could actually debug your Unity game. There is another method which is called AirLink that can be used to view your game on the VR headset without connecting any wires. Let's look at how to do that. So what you see here is my, my project which I'm currently working on and I'm just going to go ahead and open up the Oculus app. This is important for the tethering process. Whether you've connected the device via cable or you want to do it through Wi-Fi, like wireless, either ways you need to have this app open. So the moment you open the app, you would start seeing the options on the device. Press the Oculus button to bring up the, the taskbar and then click on quick settings. Now you see the quest link button over there. Pressing that will give you the option to connect to the uh, system which you are connected via USB right now. But then if you look on top, you, it says use add link. Let's go ahead and enable that. The moment you do that, it takes a while if you are doing it for the very first time. But then the moment you do that, you will start seeing your the desktop or laptop name and then you know it gives you the all the host name and whatever uh, it belongs to click on the launch button and that's pretty much it be wire free you don't need to have the usb connected anymore as you can see i am inside the air link and it works perfectly fine so let's just test it out with the project which I have uh, running currently in the Unity. All right, so I am in the Unity project right now. What happens is at times the, the device might go to sleep and it might get disconnected, but that's totally fine. You don't need to worry about it. Just go ahead and hit play here and we should be able to see the visuals running up in our device. There we go. We have our thing. Whoa. Okay. All right. So we have our project running up here. Uh, one of my hand con controllers is like away. Let me just get that. And that's it. We have our air link working right now. And as you can see, I can move around. I can do things. And I was actually surprised to see it had quite decent performance compared to USB. It is going to be a little bit laggy for you, but it takes away the, the, the problem of, you know, pulling the wire all the time. So if you ask me, this is a must try for people and I would leave it for you to judge whether you want to use it or not. Now there are, there are a few do's and don'ts which I would like to recommend based on my experience with the AirLink. The first is try to have a good quality local area network. By that, what I mean is your standard 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi router which you have might not be a good option. I'll tell you the reason why. When you are trying to use the AirLink, what you're doing is literally you are streaming the data between the device and the computer and all the processing of the visual is done by the computer and sent to the device in real time. Whereas the device is going to send its position, the hand position, the controller position, the HMD position, all of that again in real time to the PC. So there is a lot of data transfer happening between these two. Now, ideally, if a USB connection is involved, that's pretty straightforward and it is direct. Like the PC is connected to the USB device and you know, there is no interference or you know, any uh, signal to worry about. But since we are dealing with a wireless interface, there is 
a bit of latency which we might get. So a high speed local area network and by that what I mean is something like a 5G capable router would be ideal for this kind of task. Thankfully, the Quest 2 already supports 5G, 5 gigahertz, whereas all you need to do is just make sure that your router is a 5G supported router and your laptop is or a desktop is connected to the same 5G network. Now that will enable a very high speed communication between these two. If your Wi-Fi network, that is your local area network is not that great in terms of, you know, having um, uh, good bandwidth, then it is going to be a trouble for you. It's going to be a lot more choppier, a lot more, um, it will become more of, you know, something which you can't use, right? So that is the only catch with the air link. Other than that, if you feel that your network is not capable, then feel free to always use a, a USB cable, which is, which works like a charm. Just make sure to have like a pretty lengthy one so that you don't pull things and, you know, stumble upon and, you know, break things at the end of the day. So that's pretty much with this video. So I hope this was informative and feel free to comment if you have any questions and make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.